Hi guys, we're here for our Bible in a Year Challenge reading, and today we are on July 12th, and that is going to come from Nehemiah 8 through 10, Psalm 85, and 2 Corinthians 13. Nehemiah chapter 8. So on October 8th, Ezra the priest brought the scroll of the law before the assembly, which included the men and women and all the children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the west gate from early morning until noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people paid close attention to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. To his right stood Mattithiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Messiah. To his left stood Padiah, Mishael, Melchijah, Melchijah, Hashem, Hash, Dadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Ezra stood on the platform in the full view of all the people. When they saw him open the book, they all rose to their feet. Then Ezra the praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, Amen, Amen, as they lifted their hands toward heaven. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now the Levites, Joshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akab, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Masiah, Kalida, Azariah, Jazabad, Hanan, and Peliah instructed the people who were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read, helping the people understand each passage. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, Don't weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. All the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of choice foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Levites too quieted the people, telling them, Hush, don't weep, for this is a sacred day. So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal, to share gifts of food, and to celebrate with great joy, because they had heard God's word and understood them. Under heard God's words and understood them. The Festival of Shelters. On October 9th, the family leaders and their priests and Levites met with Ezra to go over the law in greater detail. As they studied the law, they discovered that the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should live in shelters during the festival to be held that month. He had said that a proclamation should be made throughout their towns and especially in Jerusalem, telling people to go to the hills to get branches from olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and fig trees. They were to use these branches to make shelters in which they would live during the festival as it was prescribed in the law. So the people went out and cut branches and used them to build shelters on the roofs of their houses, in their courtyards, in the courtyards of God's temple, or in the squares just inside the water gate and the Ephraim gate. So everyone who had returned from captivity lived in these shelters for the seven days of the festival. And everyone was filled with great joy. The Israelites had not celebrated this way since the days of Joshua, son of Nun. Ezra read from the book of the law of God on each of the seven days of the festival. Then on October 15th, they held a solemn assembly as the law of Moses required. The, chapter 9, the people confessed their sins. On October 31st, the people returned for another observance. This time they fasted and dressed in sackcloth and sprinkled dust on their heads. Those of Israelite descent separated themselves from all foreigners as they confessed their own sins and the sins of their ancestors. The book of the law of the Lord their God was read aloud to them for about three hours. Then for three more hours they took turns confessing their sins and worshiping the Lord their God. Some of the Levites were standing on the stairs crying out to the Lord their God. Their names were Joshua, Bani, Cadmiel, Shebaniah, Bani, Sherebiah, Bani, and Kanani. Then the leaders of the Levites, Jeshua, Kadmiel, Bani, Hashabnia, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah called out to the people, Stand up and praise the Lord your God, for he lives from everlasting to everlasting. Then they continued, Praise his glorious name. It is far greater than we can think or say. You alone are the Lord. You made the skies and the heavens and the stars. You made the earth and the seas and everything in them. You preserve and give life to everything, and all the angels of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him from Ur of the Chaldeans and renamed him Abraham. When he had, provoked, when he had proved himself faithful, you made a covenant with him to give him and his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and Girgashites. And you have done what you promised, for you always are true to your word. 
You saw the sufferings and sorrows of our ancestors in Egypt, and you heard their cries from beside the Red Sea. You displayed miraculous signs and wonders against Pharaoh, his servants, and all his people, for you knew how arrogantly the Egyptians were treating them. You have a glorious reputation that has never been forgotten. You divided the sea for your people so they could walk through on dry land. And then you hurled their enemies into the depths of the sea. They sank like stones beneath the mighty waters. You led our ancestors by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night so that they could find their way. You came down on Mount Sinai and spoke to them from heaven. You gave them regulations and instructions that were just and laws and commands that were true. You instructed them concerning the laws of your holy Sabbath and you commanded them through Moses your servant to obey all the commands, laws, and instructions. You gave them bread from heaven when they were hungry and water from the rock when they were thirsty. You commanded them to go and take possession of the land you had sworn to give them. But our ancestors were a proud and stubborn lot, and they refused to obey your commands. They refused to listen and did not remember the miracles you had done for them. Instead, they rebelled and appointed a leader to take, back, to take them back to their slavery, slavery in Egypt. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry and full of unfailing love and mercy. You did not abandon them, even though they had made an idol shaped like a calf and said, This is your God who brought you out of Egypt. They sinned and committed terrible blasphemies, but in your great mercy you did not abandon them to die in the wilderness. The pillar of clouds still led them forward by day, and the pillar of fire showed them the way through the night. You sent your good spirit to instruct them, and you did not stop giving them bread from heaven or water for their thirst. You, for forty years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing in all that time. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. Then you helped our ancestors conquer great kingdoms and many nations, and you placed your people in every corner of the land. They completely took over the land of King Sihon of Heshbon and the land of King Og of Bashan. You made their descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and brought them into the land you had promised to give their ancestors. They went in and took possession of the land. You subdued whole nations before them. Even the kings and the Canaanites who inhabited the land were powerless. Your people could deal with them as they pleased. Our ancestors captured fortified cities and fertile land. They took over houses full of good things with cisterns already dug and vineyards and olive groves and orchards in abundance. So they ate until they were full and, and grew fat and enjoyed themselves in all your blessings. But despite all this, they were disobedient and rebelled against you. They threw away your law. They killed the prophets who encouraged them to return to you, and they committed terrible blasphemies. So you handed them over to their enemies. But in their time of trouble, they cried to you, and you heard them from heaven. In great mercy, you sent them deliverers who rescued them from their enemies. But when all was going well, your people turned to sin again, and once more you let their enemies conquer them. Yet whenever your people cried out to you again for help, you listened once more from heaven. In your wonderful mercy, you rescued them repeatedly. You warned them to return to your law, but they became proud and obstinate and disobeyed your commands. They did not follow your regulations by which people will find life if only they obey. They stubbornly turned their backs on you and refused to listen. In your love, you were patient with them for many years. You sent your spirit who, through the, the, through the prophets, warned them about their sins, but still they wouldn't listen. So once again you allowed the pagan inhabitants of the land to conquer them, but in your great mercy you did not destroy them completely or abandon them forever. But a gracious and merciful God you are. And now our God, the great and mighty and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love, do not let, us all, do not let all the hardships we have suffered be as nothing to you. Great trouble has come upon us and upon our kings and princes and priests and prophets and ancestors from the days when the kings of Assyria first triumphed over us until now. Every time you punished us, you were being just. We have sinned greatly and, we, and you gave us only what we deserved. Our kings, princes, priests, and ancestors did not obey your law or listen to your commands and solemn warnings. Even while they had their own kingdom, they did not serve you even though you showered your goodness on them. You gave them a large fertile land, but they refused to turn from their wickedness. So now today we are slaves here in the land of plenty that you gave to our ancestors. We are slaves among all this abundance. The lush produce of this land piles up in the hands of the kings whom you have set over us because of our sins. They have power over us and our cattle. We serve them at their pleasure and we are in great misery. Yet in spite of all this, we are making a solemn promise and putting it in writing. On this sealed document are the names of our princes and Levites and priests. And chapter 10, the people agreed to obey. The document was ratified and sealed with the following names. Nehemiah the governor, the son of Hakaliah. The priests who signed were Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Azariah Jeremiah, Pasher, Amariah, Melchijah, Hattush, 
Shabaniah, Malach, Haram, Merimoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Ginnathon, Barach, Meshulam, Abijah, Mejamin, Maziah, Bilgai, and Shemaiah. These are the priests. The Levites who signed were Jeshua, son of Azaniah, Binu from the family of Henadad, Cadmiel, and their fellow Levites, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Kalida, Peliah, Hanan, Micah, Rehob, Hashabiah, Zachar, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Bani, and Beninu. The leaders who signed were Parash, Pahathmob, Elam, Zatu, Bani, Bunny, Asgad, Bebai, Adonijah, Bigvai, Adin, Ader, Hezekiah, Azur, Hotiah, Hashem, Bezai, Harif, Anathoth, Nebai, Mag, Magpish, Meshalam, Hezir, Meshezabel, Zadok, Jadua, Pelatiah, Hanan, Aniah, Hashia, Hananiah, Hashab, Halohesh, Pilha, Shobek, Reham, Hashabna, Masiah, Ahia, Hanan, Anan, Malak, Haran, Haram, and Bana. The rest of the people, the priests, Levites, gatekeepers, singers, temple servants, and all who had separated themselves from the pagan people of the land, in order to serve God and who are old enough to understand, now all heartily bound themselves with an oath. They vowed to accept the curse of God if they failed to obey the law of God as issued by his servant Moses. They solemnly promised to carefully follow all the commands, laws, and regulations of the Lord their, of the Lord their Lord. The vow of the people. We promise not to let our daughters marry the pagan people of the land, nor to let our sons marry their daughters. We further promise that if the people of the land should bring any merchandise or grain to be sold on the Sabbath or on any other holy day, we will refuse to buy it. And we promise not to do any work every seventh year and to cancel the debts debts owed to us by other Jews. In addition, we promise to obey the command to pay the annual temple tax of an eighth of an ounce of silver so that there will be enough money to care for the temple of our God. This will provide for the bread of the presence, for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbaths, the new moon celebrations, and the annual festivals, for the holy offerings, and for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel. It will also provide for the other items necessary for the work of the temple of our God. We have cast sacred laws to determine when, at regular times each year, the families of the priests, Levites, and the common people should, should bring wood to God's temple to be burned on the altar of the Lord our God as required in the law. We promise always to bring the first pair of every harvest to the Lord's temple, whether it be a crop from the soil or from our fruit trees. We agreed to give to God our oldest sons and the firstborn of all our herds and flocks, just as the law requires. We will present them to the priests who minister in the temple of our God. We will store the produce in the storerooms of the temple of our God. We will bring the best of our flour and other grain offerings, the best of our fruit and the best of our new wine and olive oil. And we promise to bring to the Levites a tenth of everything our land produces, for it is the Levites who collected the tithes in our rural towns. A priest, a descendant of Aaron, will be with the Levites as they receive their tithes. And a tenth of all that is collected as tithes will be delivered by the Levites to the temple of our God and placed in the storerooms. The people and the Levites must bring these offerings of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the temple and place them in the sacred containers near the ministering priests, the gatekeepers, and the singers. So we promise together not to neglect the temple of our God. And Psalm 85. For the choir director, a psalm of the descendants of Korah. Lord, you have poured out amazing blessings in your land. You have restored the fortunes of Israel. You have forgiven the guilt of your people. Yes, you have covered all their sins. You have withdrawn your fury. You have ended your blazing anger. Now turn to us again, O God, of our salvation. Put aside your anger against us. Will you be angry with us always? Will you prolong your wrath to distant generations? Won't you revive us again so your people can rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying, for that he speaks peace to his people, his faithful ones. But let them not return to their foolish ways. Surely his salvation is near to those who honor him. Our land will be filled with his glory. Unfailing love and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. 
Truth springs up from the earth, and righteousness smiles down from heaven. Yes, the Lord pours down his blessings. Our land will yield its bountiful crops. Righteousness goes as a herald before him, preparing the way for his steps. And 2 Corinthians 13. Paul's final advice. This is the third time I am coming to visit you. As the scriptures say, the facts of every case must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I have already warned those who have been sinning when I was there on my second visit. Now I again warn them and all others, just as I did before, that this time I will not spare them. I will give you all the proof you want that Christ speaks through me. Christ is now weak in his dealings with you. He is a mighty power among you. Although he died on the cross in weakness, he now lives by the mighty power of God. We too are weak, but we live in him and have God's power, the power we use in dealing with you. Examine yourselves to see if your faith is really genuine. Test yourselves. If you cannot tell that Jesus Christ is among you, it means you have failed the test. I hope you recognize that we have passed the test and are approved by God. We pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. We pray this not to show that our ministry to you has been successful, but because we want you to do even right, to do right even if we ourselves seem to have failed. Our responsibility is never to oppose the truth, but to stand for the truth at all times. We are glad to be weak, but if you are really strong, we are glad to be weak if you are really strong. What we pray for you is your restoration to maturity. I am writing this to you before I come, hoping that I won't need to deal harshly with you when I do come. For I want to use the authority the Lord has given me to build you up, not to tear you down. Paul's final greetings. Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Rejoice, change your ways, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace, then the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet each other in Christian love. All the Christians here send you their greetings. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That is all for the book of 2 Corinthians. That's all for today. We'll see you next time.